Good afternoon, everyone. So today I'm going to do a book review on uh, the book, which is uh, "Body Is Not an Apology: The Power of Radical Self Love," written by Sonia Renee Taylor. So this book holds on to a very powerful theme, which is uh, body shaming and body-based oppressions and all. So in this book, writer really uh, challenges the readers to um, oppose the societal norms and uh, societal norms that encourages body-based oppression and also body-based uh, shame. So this write, the writer also encourages readers uh, to embrace radical self-love which will eventually transform uh, us as well as the community, which a uh, community where more people will be like inclusive. So this book actually shifted my perspective on body image, uh, self-love and self-acceptance. So I have uh, divided this book into five categories and I am going to explain based on that. Initially moving on to uh, embracing radical self-love. So in embracing radical self-love, uh, Taylor shared an experience where she advised her friend to not feel sorry for the disability she had, which eventually inspired the writer to view herself in a similar light. So she also told uh, about the uh, importance of radical self-love. Radical self-love means uh, the love which we give throughout our body. So the importance of radical self-love is beyond self-confidence and self-acceptance. And also uh, radical self-love demands us to reimagine the way how we view the body, view and treat the body uh, in different diversities and variations. So she also told that radical self-love can act as a catalyst which uh, will transform political and societal and uh, economic uh, norms. So secondly, moving on to uh, making peace with yourself. So in order to attain the path of radical self-love, we have to uh, look upon to three main factors that gives us peace, which is peace uh, with not understanding. It's okay to not understand. Uh, certain concepts and peace with differences it's okay to accept people who are different and peace with yourself so judging others based on their appearance and uh, not understanding the differences or giving more complexities to our body by giving more flaws and like making our body flawed in front of others uh, not only does not only uh, lower our self-esteem but it will also uh, give body depression so uh, we have to maintain all these pieces and in peace, uh, this type of peace to uh, challenge the societal norms. Thirdly, she talks about uh, body shame, she defies about the body shame profit complex. So she, here she tells that our body and our consumer choice has have a huge influence on uh, body shame profit complex. So one of the examples of body shame profit complex are the advertisements uh, which promote toxic beauty standards, for example, uh, Fair and Lovely. So Fair and Lovely has a huge bash nowadays because people started to understand the importance of inclusivity and uh, broad, they are more broad minded nowadays and they started to understand that dark complexion will not give you low self esteem and all. So uh, these kind of advertisements are getting a huge profit when we are more prone to uh, body shaming or when we think that we are flawed or not. Now next uh, is journey to radical self-love where she tells that four pillars have to be crossed in order to attain that radical self-love. Initially moving on to recognizing toxic thoughts and behaviors. So if we are having a conversation with someone, we should be rational enough to understand the uh, difference between toxic and non-toxic. So we should understand, oh, okay, this should be normalized and this should not be normalized. So we should come into a conclusion like that rather than normalizing every toxic thing, we should be uh, rational enough to differentiate what is toxic and what is non-toxic. And second pillar is adapting of expansive thinking. Here, the mind matters. Like we should be uh, broad-minded, we should be more inclusive towards everyone regardless of their appearance and uh, so things. Third one is embracing a, an apologetic action. Here I want to mention about working out. So nowadays people work out to attain something which is like very toxic. Uh, for boys it may be like getting a bicep or tricep or for women it may be like toning ourselves. So this kind of uh, thought on a long run will eventually uh, make us hate ourselves. 
so writer tells us to be more like children while we are moving our body children don't care about how they look or how they are going to be after they play or they don't care about the results or they don't care about whether they are tanning if they are going outside or not so we should be more like children when we are moving our body rather than thinking about what will others say and rather than thinking about the results so for fourth pillar is state of being so here writer mentions that rather than preaching to others that this is wrong and this is right we should in, uh, live up to what we preach like obviously action speaks louder than words and the last part is yeah power of difficult conversation so writer encourages the readers to involve in uh, powerful conversation the powerful conversation includes uh, including uh, sensitive conversations like inequality injustice done on certain people based on their appearance and how our mindset can change when we actively involve in these kinds of conversation so this book highlights the case of former uh, presidential candidate which is hillary clinton who after having a tense conversation with uh, black lives matter activists activists he uh, had a, he realized the importance of changing uh, heart and changing brain instead of changing the law how important it is to ha- change the heart and mind rather than changing the laws so yeah uh, so the, like uh, i a conclusion given by the author is that uh, more importantly we should change our heart and mindset than changing the laws of the um, society and also the more we cultivate the concept of uh, radical self love within us the more we are more, uh, more inclusive and we we'll, will like transform more uh, within ourselves and we will we'll also transform the world to a place where different kinds of people are different kind of unique nature of people are appreciated and celebrated so overall i feel like this book has helped me a lot uh, to understand what is toxic and what is not toxic because i was also a victim of a body shaming i was undergoing uh, fat shaming when i was like at a young age by my friends and relatives as well so i thought at that time i thought it was like something was wrong with me like because people are criticizing me for my body and i was like feeling oh okay there is something wrong with me but eventually i came to know that it's not um, i don't have any fault it's the society which has uh, been telling that i am at fault but i was not at fault at any point because that's the way how i am and that i should appreciate the way how i am i understood that and this book eventually helped me a lot so thank you